Thank you for that. I'm here today to present a model of something that my partners and I have developed over a 15-year period uh, of our insights gathered from working in venture capital and starting up about a dozen companies over the years. And those companies have ranged from the biotech company, like the one that is my primary day job, to high-tech companies and low-tech companies. What we realized as we thought back on many of these companies that we'd started over the years, and some of them are successful and some of them are less so, and tried to start making sense of what were the commonalities in those companies that made them successful and what were the lessons we could learn uh, from some of those. So uh, I have the very audacious uh, title here of Making Sense of Human Progress. I don't know if we're going to fully get there today, but we're going to maybe give you some insights from the startup world uh, and perhaps provide a model for future innovation if you're out there and you're thinking about starting up a new company. So what makes a great startup? This is a question we get all the time. Back in venture capital, we're starting up new companies. It's, a, it's, a, it's something that we're constantly throwing around, even among ourselves, right? And it's an interesting question because you should, why is it that startups should even exist? Why don't big multinational companies just solve all of our problems, right? These multi-billion dollar research budgets, all of these people that work for them, why do startups exist? I'm not prepared to answer that question today. I'm not sure why that is. I think there's a specific reason for every startup to exist. But what we can all accept is that there's a reason for that, and the reason is that there's value being created. So in this question of how do startups create value, I think is the fundamental question. And they create value by solving problems. And so we find ourselves in this amazing era today that we live in of the first era of sustained technological progress in the history of mankind, right? We've, we've started, we have these fits and starts over time in human history of, of getting better at things, and then we all lose it to some terrible tragedy or some war. But we find ourselves in the Industrial Revolution that continues today in this era of continuing to get better at things. This is a chart that on the x-axis it shows uh, a period of 100 years, from 1900 to 2000 in the United States. And on the y-axis it's showing uh, our ability to convert use, energy into something useful, so power into something useful. Okay? This is a very simple chart that shows the US GDP over that exact same period, 100 years. Okay? Let me overlay them. They match up perfectly. Right? There's something subtly profound in this, I think, in how we think about what makes a great startup, how we think about what is human progress. Because human progress is our ability to make these little incremental improvements over time, to get better at doing things. Okay? And better at doing things, uh, fundamentally, it's. Progress and efficiency is about converting a raw material into something that's useful. And what's left over from that process is waste, right? So there are fundamental rules that go into this. There are losses in the system. And so I'd make the case that all human progress is really a war against entropy. That, that we're in this battle uh, to get better at converting raw materials into something that's useful, all right? So how do we do that? How do we do that better? And what I'm arguing today, and what we argue in this model of rules, tools, and fools, is that by having greater leverage in your system, you're going to have a greater impact. And by leverage, we mean this in, in the traditional sense of leverage, of, of getting more out of an output than you get from an input. But the, the model what focuses on is things that can have more leverage can have a greater impact. And so it's this hierarchy of leverage that is the rules, tools, and fools. So, so let me walk you through how we think about that with rules, tools, and fools. Okay, behind me is a picture of the blue marble taken by Apollo 8, 17. Nothing on the Earth has really changed since mankind set foot on it. Fundamentally, this is probably what the Earth looked like thousands of years ago, right? The rules that apply to us today are the same rules that applied to everyone tens of thousands of years ago. So we accept those, okay? There's an incredible amount of leverage in that. It sort of applies to everyone. Tools are a subset of that, and, and some tools can have a, a modest amount of leverage, and some tools can have a lot. Fools are at the middle, and, and fools, they're, they're the people at the middle of all of this. And the term fools is meant to be provocative, right? It's meant, it's meant to knock us off our foundation when we're thinking about making a new company and to say, hey, look, is this a fool's company or is this a tool's company? And I'm going to argue today that the sweet spot of human innovation and the sweet spot of startups, certainly venture-backed startups, is really this interface between the rules and the fools and creating tools that allow us uh, to help people accomplish things that are incredibly meaningful, all subject to the constraints of the system. Okay, so what are rules? I'm going to take you through what, what are rules, what are tools, what are fools, give you a few examples, and then we're going to wrap it up, okay? Rules are the fundamental laws that we have that may be dictated by mankind, the U.S. Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the statutes we have, but also it's basic stuff. It's physics. It's chemistry. It's biology. We're all subject to these same rules. What I would argue when you're thinking about a startup, though, is that over the long run, all rules are actually just assumptions, right? 
And if you don't believe me, think about communication 200 years ago, right? Who would have ever thought of something like the telephone? Think about communication today versus 100 years ago. Who would have ever thought about Skype or FaceTime? To being able to communicate with someone on the other side of the country without having to leave your desk. It's amazing. And that really, I would argue, is a redefinition of how we think about the rules. It's not about transporting a physical person to the other side of the country. Communication is something slightly different. And we see these innovations, certainly in communication, at an incredibly rapid rate today. So what are tools? This is the rocket steam engine. And the rocket steam engine certainly wasn't the first steam engine. It's, it wasn't even the first uh, steam locomotive. But what I like about the rocket example is the rocket steam engine was a, a very good amalgamation of a whole bunch of little incremental improvements finally condensed into one tool that really became the basis for what was a steam locomotive for the next 150 years that came after that. Medicine. Medicine's a tool. Uh, this is this a strain of penicillium, where we get penicillin. This is a fungus, uh, discovered penicillin only in this century, which always shocks me. Sort of the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, we ended up developing it as part of the World War II effort. It shocks me that we didn't discover this before that. But this is an amazing tool, obviously. Some of you may recognize this. This is the first integrated circuit discovered or invented by Jack Kilby while he was at Texas Instruments in 1958. You might recognize this one from 1980. This is more of an integrated circuit that we think of today. What's amazing is the time period from that original integrated circuit in 58 to about 1980, uh, when this picture was taken, is about the same amount of time from this picture to today. And you can imagine the, the incredible progress we've made on the tools on top of this between them. In the modern era, we find ourselves in that same last 30-year period, building on top of the tool of, uh, of the integrated circuit is software, things like Twitter. And these are amazing tools that have an incredible amount of leverage. The important thing to remember about tools, and I'd argue, is that tools are persistent and tools are scalable. The reason why tools are this sweet spot in this interface between rules and fools is that once we invent something, it's there forever, as long as we remember it and we don't take two steps back. Right? So we invent things, and each of us in this room can invent something, very small and incremental. And we're going to pile up all of those little tools, one on top of another. And that's what sustains human progress. And that's where value is created. And that's what makes us all wealthy over the long run. Okay? So fools. This is two boys fertilizing the field after a long day on the farm. Um, actually, that's me on the left there. I grew up on a farm. Um, fools is a word that's meant to be provocative here. And I, and I start with myself here, because it is not meant to be pejorative per se. Right? It's, uh, we try to classify our companies into fools businesses or tools businesses primarily. Right? And so the fools business, when we think of a fools business, we think of something that has a lot of human input and requires a lot of human ingenuity to run day after day after day after day. And the thing is, most of us, myself included, uh, I'm in a fools business for most of my day job. And so what I challenge people to think about is, how do you turn what you do in your fools business every day in something that's sort of institutionalized, that's systematized, turn it into a tool? And then how do you move on and discover a new tool? How do you do something more valuable? And how do you pass that knowledge then on to everyone else? So farmers are certainly a classic example of, of a fool's business. It takes a lot of human input. But then someone invented the combine, what's sitting behind me in this picture. Right? That was an amazing tool. And these are the tools that are going to proliferate and spread to the rest of the world as they become more modern, modernized in their farming. Okay? Doctors are a great example of a fool's business. Clearly, doctors are great professions. <laughs> I have a lot of respect for doctors. But doctors can only influence folks on an order of tens of thousands over the lives of their career. This doctor happens to be Alexander Fleming the inventor of penicillin. So when you think about what Alexander Fleming could do in his life as a doctor versus what he could do in his life as a tool builder, he saved literally billions of lives since that invention. And of course, there are a lot of other people involved in that invention as well. This, from left to right, we have a telegraph operator. We have two farmers on the right. Fundamentally, it fools businesses for, for most of their lives, right? But also, that's Thomas Edison on the left, right? That's Henry Ford on the right. That's the writer John Burroughs in the middle. Writers, I would argue, also, it's sort of a tools business. You're creating something that can be infinitely scaled. Once, once, you, once you write a book, you can share it with everyone in the world, especially in the digital era. Right? So these guys, I, I like this example, because it's challenging us to be reflective on how we all play the part of the fools in, in our day jobs. But, but there are aspects of what we do that can be tool builders. Right? And if you're building a business, if you're building a venture-backed business, certainly, you want to focus on that nice sweet spot of how you turn your human ingenuity, like these gentlemen, into something that's a tool that can be very scalable and potentially very profitable. But far more important than profit is creating value. And creating value means you're creating human wealth. And wealth in the intangible sense as well, not just the monetary sense. 
Here's the thing to remember about people. They are not scalable, right? That's how we differentiate a tool's business from, from a fool's business, right? Because people get sick. People die. People don't show up to work. Um, you get emotional one day. You have a bad day. That those businesses tend to be more fragile and not scalable. We can forget all the things that goes along with a fool's business. Now, a fool's business can be turned sort of into a tool's business by creating business processes, by writing software, by capturing the best practices of what you do. And I would encourage everyone to do that in their job and to try to make themselves obsolete and then move on to something else. Okay? I'm serious about that. You'll be very valuable to the world. So to recap, rules are assumptions at the end of the day, I would argue. Right? Tools, they're persistent and they're scalable. And fools, they are not scalable and they are certainly not persistent and they are fickle. Okay? The fool side of the business happens to be the most rewarding for all of our businesses, I'm sure. Uh, but just remember, when you're starting a nice venture-backed business, that's probably not the place where you want to start. You want to challenge yourselves. How do I make this into more tools? Okay? So I'm going to give you three examples. A low-tech example, a biotech example, and a high-tech example of how we bring these together and how we think about um, new tools and new businesses. So a classic example, this is a prospector, right? Maybe back in the gold rush uh, in the 1800s. Right, that's a fool's business. This guy's out, he's crushing rocks with his bare hands, and then he goes and he finds a shovel and a pickaxe. Awesome. His, his productivity has now increased multifold, right? Because he has this nice pickaxe. That's a great tool. It's great that someone invented the pickaxe. Over on the, the right-hand side there, this is a patent application from 1921, maybe long after this gentleman lived, but this was an improved pickaxe. And I love this example, right? Because even something as simple as a pickaxe uh, can get better over time. Okay? And of course, uh, this gentleman wouldn't even uh, recognize our, our modern mining techniques today. Progress continues. We can mine things much better today than what this gentleman had to endure back then. In the biotech example, the rules that my business is subject to in the biotech world, uh, there, are, there are laws, there are statutes, there's basic biology. Uh, there's also the Food and Drug Administration. They set the standards by which we can treat human patients. Okay. So the tools, right here, I'd focus on penicillin because we're already familiar with this. And, and on the right there, Alexander Fleming as the fool, as the doctor in this case. This tool has saved literally billions of lives today. And it also set sort of a nice platform for other people to build upon. So the basis of beta-lactam antibiotics, of which penicillin was the first. It's opened this enormous field that has probably saved half the lives in this room at one point or another. Okay, so let's talk about the modern era, something high-tech. Twitter, I'll offer as an example, just to keep with this. Right on the rules side, Twitter's subject to all the basic rules, physics. Um, certainly, the integrated circuit was, it was a rule set that we built on top of. Um, but the interesting thing about Twitter also was this arbitrary constraint. It was an assumption right, that we're going to have 140 characters. And it was rethinking how we would communicate. And 140 is interesting because the SMS standard at the time was 160 characters. And so the idea was, hey, there's 140 characters of text, and there's an extra 20 characters left over to tell us who you are. That was an assumption. And on top of that, they built this phenomenal tool. And then all of us on top of that, who use Twitter, sort of have built additional tools. And we use this, and you find creative ways to do it. So the fool's part of this, as the user, certainly, we're in the hundreds of millions in climbing. And so obviously, an incredible amount of leverage here. All right. So let's bring this back home. Rules, tools, and fools. How we think about human progress, how we think about innovation, what makes a great startup. What I would challenge everyone in the audience today to think about is how, how do you think about the job that you're doing today that is fundamentally a fool's business, the, the activities we carry out? And how do you think about institutionalizing that? How do you think about optimizing that and turn it into more of a tool's business? Because if you're able to do that, and then you're able to share with the world the process by which you have done that and the tool that you've created, You've actually made this amazing little leap forward that sustains all human progress today. And everyone can be a participant in that. It doesn't take this masterful inventors like a Thomas Edison, right? like a Henry Ford. I think everyone in this room can do this. It's just about these little small steps over time that cobble together into this amazing era that we find ourselves in of sustained technological progress. And I challenge you to go out and do that. I know it's possible. Um, and find these small ways that you can contribute to that. Thank you.